Hello and welcome to worship from Trinity United Church in Winnipeg for Sunday, October the 10th, 2021. We're grateful you have found your way here to participate in this Thanksgiving Sunday service. We acknowledge that we live, work, play, and worship on Treaty 1 land in the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe, Cree, Oji Cree, and Dakota peoples and in the heart of the Métis Nation. We acknowledge with respect the history, spirituality, and culture as we live in peace and pray for justice and reconciliation. Today, just a couple of things to talk about. First of all, this Sunday is in-person worship, and if you feel comfortable that you would like to come, then we will be, the church will be open on Sunday morning at 10 for service at 1045. There are a couple of announcements in the email that accompanies this. We are trying to fill up the cart with granola bars, juice boxes uh, to, for West Broadway, and also we're looking for donations to help with water for the garden project. So please take a look, and if you're able to help, that would be wonderful. All our gifts are warmly received and with gratitude. Today, we light the candle. We take the flame from our Christ candle and we light our affirming candle. This is our intentional statement that no matter who you are or who you love, no matter who you are becoming, no matter how much money we have, how many clothes in our closet, how many cars in our driveway, that we are all beloved children of God, welcome and accepted here. We call ourselves to worship with, Mo with Voices United 227 for the fruit of all creation, verses 1 and 3, played and sung by Bert Johnson. and respond. May your message speak to our hearts as we live our faith today. Amen. The scripture is Matthew 6 verses 25 to 33 read by Nancy DeLong. Scripture is our song for the journey, the living word passed on from generation to generation to guide and inspire. A reading from the Revised Standard Version, Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 to 33. This passage follows Jesus preaching to his disciples about not openly displaying the fact that they are praying. They should not pray in public to be seen by others, but pray quietly, and he teaches them the Lord's Prayer. Also, they should not fast in public, nor store up treasures on earth. 
They cannot serve two masters, only God. Now beginning at verse 25. Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor about your body, what you shall put on. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow, nor reap, nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And which of you, by being anxious, can add one year to his span of life? And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore, do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things shall be yours as well. May God bless to our understanding this reading from the Holy Scripture. A special treat today, we have a hymn by Second Chance, Oh How Good It Is, played and sung by Second Chance.
So this might have been a familiar passage for you, and whether it was familiar or brand new, what phrase or image or word touched your heart as you heard Nancy read it? In its description full of many images, Jesus talked about anxiety or worry in some translations, and he talked about it in concrete, tangible terms, using everyday items that everyone would be familiar with. Birds, grass, lilies, us. They are genuine, earthy, and everyday. They are direct and authentic and normal, normal, everyday things. And they are memorable. We can imagine a disciple wandering around worrying about food and drink and clothes and housing and then seeing a bird or a flower or grass on their travels and remembering what Jesus said. When you are worried, what makes you stop and think? What inspires you to remember that God is with us? As we listened to this message and thought about our own lives, perhaps it invited us to let go of our needless worries and anxieties and to turn our thoughts to other things. For some of us, we might have reflected on these words and images and thought, well, that's easy for me because I have a home, food in my cupboards, and clothes to wear. But what about people who don't have these basic necessities? What is Jesus saying to them? Interestingly, Jesus would have been likely talking directly to those whose greatest worries were listed here, as those were the ones who gathered around Jesus, the ones who followed him the ones who were wanting to hear his message of God's love for them as individuals and for their community. Even in the midst of tremendous need, Jesus continues to remind them about trusting in God's love. Hmm. So where are we in this story? Perhaps we have an increasingly important part to play in this story. Maybe we are the ones, we are the ones in our awareness of how blessed we are, how grateful we are, to bring a little of God's love to all in our community. Are we the ones to share what we have with others so their worries may be alleviated? Are we the ones to open our hearts and live God's love so our world is less anxious? Jesus reminds us that when we are worried or anxious, that God walks with us, that God is as close to our breath, and that we still have the opportunity to bring God's kingdom to our community. There are so many ways to respond to the needs of others, and this Thanksgiving is just the time and place to do so. And in return, well, in return, if we need something like that, is the realization that these actions, whether they are big or small, help to bring God's love in familiar, genuine, earthy, direct, authentic, everyday ways. Our response is just what Jesus was talking about. I'll end today with the words of the moderator Richard Bott as he reflected on Thanksgiving. He writes, May we find ways of helping each other to sleep safely when weariness overtakes, of building shelter where there is room for all, of setting a feast where the hungry are filled, of making a home where every child, no matter their age, no matter their brokenness, 
no matter, no matter, where they are held safe and valued and loved. And may we in the helping, the building, the settling, the making, find our sleep, our shelter, our feast, and our home. May it be so. Amen. Our next hymn is Voices United 242, Let All Things Now Living, played and sung by Bert Johnson. Let all things now living, a song of thanksgiving, to God our Creator, triumphantly you raise, who fashioned and made us, protected and saved us, by guiding us unto the end of our days. God's banners are o'er us, pure light goes before us, a pillar of our joy. and the ministry of Trinity United Church. We are grateful and we offer our thanks. The prayers of the people are created and read by Charlie Powell. Let us pray. In humility, God, we acknowledge that it is only through Christ that we are able to approach you. And so we give thanks. We are grateful that you accept us care about us, and show your love in so many ways. For this awesome universe that is designed perfectly for our good, that we can appreciate the beauty in a sunset, that we can experience the joy just by watching a bird or playing with a pet, for the power of even a smile, and for the abundance from just one seed as you are generous, help us to be generous. As you are patient, help us to be patient. As you show mercy, help us to be non-judgmental. As your love is unconditional, help us to be blind to color, class and creed. Help keep us strong in the faith when we are apart from one another, conscious of your ever-presence. By your spirit, help us to be encouraging to one another. Bless the ministry of our leaders. We give thanks for those who continue to serve us through challenging times. Be with our youth and children as they find their way forward. Lord, we pray in solidarity with all our brothers and sisters in Christ in every nation. We pray that your Holy Spirit will minister to each one, especially those suffering persecution for their faith, for those struggling to remain hopeful, for those living with abuse. May your caring presence be made real to them. We uphold our civic and political leaders and those in a position to influence them. May they look to you for guidance and wisdom. 
We quietly remember friends and loved ones in need at this time of your healing touch. And now we repeat the words of our Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Our final hymn today is uh, More Voices 182 Grateful, played and sung by Bert Johnson. God's people in the world to share God's love with all we meet. Amen. <laughs>